Council meeting of March 3rd, 2020 is called to order. Kathy, would you please lead us in the pledge? Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Dorsey is out of town unexpectedly this evening on a family matter. Is there a motion to excuse Mayor Dorsey from tonight's meeting? I moved. Oh. Go ahead. So it's moved and is there a second? Second. All right. Yeah. So it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. Motion carries. <coughs> Donna, will you call the roll, please? I will. Council Member Feast? Here. Council Member Inesco? Here. Council Member Bode? Here. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Here. Council Member McDowell. Present. Council Member Schmidt. Here. All right. And does the council have any changes to the agenda this evening? No. No. Right. Seeing none, we'll move on to council reports. Council Member Fees, will you begin? Sure. Um, I had the pleasure, and Kathy will probably share as well, um, to attend the Governor's Committee on Disability Issues and Employment this last week. Uh, last Thursday night, we attended a two-hour town hall at the PUD3, and we heard from several community members on issues regarding the centralized support systems, um, education, housing, and transportation issues for our community with disabilities. Uh, we've got some really great news to report that uh, we have a People's First chapter that is starting here in Shelton. Um, People's First is an advocacy group for people with disabilities organized and ran by people with disabilities so we're really excited to have them join our community um, also a really nice little report out on the efforts um, that are happening always at memorial hall for our veterans with disabilities um, and then the county city and some other partners are working on um, a countywide leadership and community member council on disability issues and the county is really driving that. It's the assessor that's driving that. So it's good information for us to know um, and be part of. And then um, also, uh, also celebrating our new homeless coordinator that's coming on as well. And then we followed that with a two and a half hour leadership breakfast on Friday, where we took the information and the comments from Thursday evening and we addressed these questions. And the questions were with the impending decision of I-976 and the recent reduction in service um, for our dial -a ride and how can Mason County Transit and the disability community strategize and maintain current levels of service and restore evening hours? So we had some good discussion about that. Um, and then how might the Shelton, Mason, uh, Shelton and Mason community design and implement centralized resources and service network? So, um, and I know that with homeless coordination and things like that, we have a lot of folks that are out there with disabilities. And so how do we coordinate our resources and our efforts with that? And then what steps might be taken to identify and mitigate additional barriers faced by people with disabilities who are experiencing homelessness? So again, um, good information, great, great uh, discussion. And what I committed to do was bringing this information back to the council and um, our staff and to figure out how we might coordinate with our county partners on some of those issues. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Council wow. Member Out <laughs> Outside of our normal briefings, I attended an informational uh, briefing to the county staff about the coronavirus today. And um, mostly it's what we've been seeing on the news, wash your hands and, and stuff like that. The county's going to twice a day wipe their banisters down, their rails, their doorknobs, and just be extra safe. And if somebody coughs at the counter when they're paying their water bill, you know, sanitize the counter. But um, that's about it. Thank you. Council Member Bode? I got to uh, be a part of the interview process for the new Public Works Director. There were some great candidates for that. And then I actually got to meet with a few uh, uh, people in town and talk about permits. And that was some pretty robust, entertaining conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, as for myself, I had two meetings with constituents over the last week and a half. And next week, I'll be attending the Opiate Stakeholders Meeting, which is a meeting held in collaboration with over 100 partners in Mason County. There's typically about 50 to 60 at every, any given meeting. And so I anticipate we'll have a lot of conversation about some of the new partnerships and the onboarding of the new position at the city as well. Kathy? Well, last Tuesday night I went and spoke at this Shelton School Board meeting uh, to bring forth the idea of putting a 
um, high school student, non-voting student on our council to learn what government is, city government is, and how they can take it back to their classes and their, um, their uh, well, back to their classes and, and uh, share with what we do here. So the school board was quite excited about that. So that's kind of got the ball rolling on that. Um, the briefing with Jeff, uh, Thursday and Friday was out at the PUD and Megan shared a lot, so I won't take up anybody's time, but it was very good. Saturday, I attended the Shelton Sports Hall of Fame. 25 uh, ind individuals from Shelton were inducted, and one woman out of that 25 was, so that was kind of cool. We would have liked to have more women, but that's. And so I attended that. Um, I'll be attending the Create a Bowl tomorrow evening here at the Civic Center. All, all uh, proceeds go to the uh, Saints Pantry, and um, that's my week, two weeks. Thank you. Council Member Schmidt. Good evening. Um, in addition to a phone briefing on Monday, I also attended the uh, community panel um, for the uh, Public Works Director interviews, and it was great, uh, great turnout of community members that were involved in that, and thanks to staff for putting that together, and uh, I agree with Council Member Bode. Some very good candidates, some very strong interest in bringing talent to the city, which is great because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to make uh, the city of Shelton an employer of choice, and we want to attract the best of the best to come here. So um, looking forward to um, that process wrapping up. Uh, the other thing I'd like to pass along is um, city manager brought up the importance of the census that is coming. And I started doing a little bit of digging around in some of the census data and some of the information relating to Shelton Mason County. There are four independent census tracts within the city limits or in the city limits UGA. Um, when you look at some of the data provided by OFM, the, the likelihood of a turnout or return of information um, within the downtown area, especially that census tract downtown, is actually quite low. Um, and as we know, that equates to certain things because that's how our population is ultimately analyzed. So um, I got some thoughts in my head. Good old fashioned doorbelling might be a good idea for some of us to uh, put on our comfortable shoes and walk around town and um, kind of try to drum up um, the uh, trust and support of that process uh, to keep, keep, the, um, keep the data coming to uh, the federal government. So when it comes to uh, funds and or uh, structuring for other um, other programs uh, that Shelton gets what Shelton needs, um, which is reflective of our of our um, population base. Outside of that, uh, the coronavirus is definitely uh, been on the radar as well. Working for a public agency, there's lots of questions, lots of things that are starting to be impacted. As we know, our school district uh, closed one of the schools today for a deep cleaning. Um, but things to think about in terms of um, how do we keep the city functioning and how do we make sure that all the essential services are online here and our customers, our, our, our residents are getting the services they need to get if we become impacted by that and that our lines of communication are open. So uh, look, look forward to kind of keeping a tight finger and uh, on the pulse of that and um, in communication with the county and departments of health. So, and that is all. With that, we'll move on to general public comment. Donna, has anyone signed up for our first general public comment period? Yes. Our first speaker is Crystal Morgan. And when you get to the podium, if you'll please tell us your name and whether or not you're a city resident. Uh, my name is Crystal Morgan, and I am a city resident. Um, so I, I have lived here in Shelton for probably about five, five years, and um, I recently have, um, well, I've started a business, and it's just in its infancy at this point. It's called Dream Big Northwest uh, Social Purpose Corporation, and I've given everybody a copy of my business plan. And um, basically what a social purpose corporation is, is a corporation in which it has a social purpose. It's run a lot like a nonprofit, but it's a for-profit business. Um, so I think we can agree that uh, there is a sense of desperation on the streets here in Shelton and in the whole country, really, when it comes to homelessness <coughs> and addiction and, you know, people needing assistance with their mental health issues and all of that. 
Um, I'm a person in long-term recovery, which means um, that I have had firsthand knowledge and experience with uh, what many of our homeless friends out there are struggling with. This is why uh, I see this situation as an opportunity to make a difference, while also offering a service that allows members of the community to make a difference at the same time. Um, the intention in the community that I wish to provide is, that, um, is outreach and uh, to find uh, those that want help, basically. You know, the homeless out there, not all of them want help, but by doing the outreach part portion of it, I, I am sure that we can find many people that don't want to be homeless anymore and do want the help. Um, um, and if, if needed, then link them to the resources that they may need for addiction or mental health, and, um, and then employ the homeless by offering a day's work to those that may otherwise be panhandling. Uh, no permanent address would be required to work for my business. Um, at Dream Big Northwest, we will focus on environmental cleanup of the streets and parks, abandoned homeless uh, camps, and provide uh, services to residential customers as well. Like if somebody is looking for maybe eviction cleanup at a home, or if they need help going to the dump, or um, light landscaping, things like that. Um, at Dream Big Northwest, we, uh, we also seek to obtain contracts with the city as well as partnerships with the local community and community-based programs and um, hopefully sponsorships with large and small corporations as well. There's a nonprofit uh, called The Other Ones Foundation in Austin, Texas. They're a nonprofit, but they've had extremely great success with a program very similar to what I'm trying to do. Um, and they also will, uh, with some funding, do consulting which is really good news. Uh, my business plan has a detailed description of everything uh, that I can foresee being possible with this opportunity, uh, but I am certain that more could be revealed because it's, it's really a big opportunity. Um, so our next step is to get funding to purchase a crew cab truck, hopefully with a dump bed, and so that we can get started doing this important work. Thank you. For Thank you. And Donna, do we have anyone else this yes, time? Yes, we have one more. Okay. Susan Kirchhoff. Hi, <clears throat> Susan Kirchhoff. And I think I'm in the city. I live in Shelton. I don't know if my actual address is city. I'm just going to be honest. Okay. <laughs> so I am, I'm the executive director of the Shelton Youth Connection. Formerly as the Shelton Family Center, we're actually going to be branding the Shelton Youth Connection because we are focusing on the youth and the homeless youth population. Um, we've been in business for about two years. Um, I came a couple, about a year and a half ago and kind of announced who we were. Since then, we've um, took over the 123 South 2nd Street and redid it. And I'm um, hoping that any of you who has not came will come. And if you haven't come, we're going to invite you um, because we've done wonderful things. And um, I'll just say that there's a good and a bad. I just came back from we our first grant was the Youth Homeless Demonstration Project because last year's pit count point in time count had zero unaccompanied youth counted. This year's point in time count had 11 unaccompanied youth. So there's a big difference. In the Homeless Demonstration Project, um, Mason County, unfortunately, fortunately, is number one in putting people on the program. So we are the highest in the 23 rural states in our cohort. So in the group that's, that I'm part of the funding source with, or Shelton Family Center is, um, we're number one in, in putting people into our program. So it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. So it's part of what Mason County, I mean, it's a problem that we, we don't always want to think about. Um, our goal for the future, we just got another grant. If you saw the paper, we, we actually have received another grant. That's a three-year grant that's, um, we're working out the kinks and learning, but it's putting in an ability for us to go into um, and meet with individuals and young adults before they become homeless when they leave public funded facilities, which includes foster care, juvenile detention, mental health, um, and build a relationship with them two weeks prior to, and then build services and help them when, once they get out. So that's our goal is to try to create a program that helps them intervene before they become homeless. Um, for a last note, I'm inviting all of you March 27th. We have a youth from the high school who is actually putting on an event called the Sound of Our Youth. 
It's going to be all the youth from the high school have signed up for it. There's an open mic. There's a band coming from Choice. Um, so it's really kind of exciting. It's March 27th from 7 to 9. Um, I think it'd be great if just because a youth is putting it on and hosting it and we're, we're helping her with it, it'd be cool to see you guys there to support her. Um, and that's our goal for the future is eventually to put in transitional housing and kind of moving forward and helping to fix the homeless population specific for youth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that is all. Yep. Thank you so much. With that, is there, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as published? I move to approve the consent agenda as published. I'll second that. Thank you. And it's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we are on to any public comment for the business agenda? I don't have any for the business agenda. All right. So the first item on the business agenda tonight is the downtown connector final acceptance. And city manager Jeff Knighton will provide us with those details. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. On May 1st, 2018, the commission at that time awarded uh, Wanch Construction and Trucking Incorporated a contract for the construction of the downtown connector project. It uh, provided for revitalization of Olympic Highway North and uh, Alder Street between C and North First Street. The restoration included new asphalt, uh, new sidewalks, the installation of a roundabout at First and Alder, and a new traffic signal system at the corner of Alder and North Seventh. Uh, replacement of the existing sidewalk there and a few other improvements including compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. The uh, contract offered 240 working days and uh, the work was complete in 236 days which I'm sure everybody paid uh, close attention to while uh, everything was open and, and being completed. The project would not have been successful without assistance from the Mason Conservation District. The uh, uh, Public Utility District 3 for, for providing the mast arms and the light fixtures and the Mason Transit Authority for providing us with a new uh, uh, transit station uh, there at the corner of 7th and Alder. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have and uh, ask that you would move this forward to the action agenda on March 17th, I believe it is. Okay. Yep. Um, before we move to the council, is there any other member of the public who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing no one, any comments or questions from the council at this time? Council Member Schmidt? Uh, just a couple things I had asked uh, our city manager offline that I just wanted to uh, reiterate to the council. I don't believe I had a, I've had a chance to do so. Um, a couple questions I asked, were there any liquidated damages or actual damages from the contractor? There were none. Correct. Um, and one other thing um, that I had discussed with Jeff is uh, prime contractor um, evaluations. Um, and we both kind of agreed uh, moving forward. It'd be interesting if you guys had any thoughts as well. But in the future, making sure that we have that built in in our processes within the city. That way, if we have good experiences, all well. But if we have bad experiences, that we don't have to necessarily repeat those when we go out to bid for projects in the future. So mm -hmm. um, those are really my only two my only two thoughts and uh, some other sidelines with you know, uh, total working days and things like that, not maybe being so generous next time and trying to push push a, push a schedule a little bit harder and uh, not being afraid to do that with the contractor community. And I think ultimately though, uh, we're getting uh, really good uh, products from the contractors we've been working with and everything has panned out to, to work out great for us. So looking forward to closing it out. Okay. Any other comments or questions for council at this time? All right. Uh, is there concurrence to place this item on the action agenda for yes. March 17th? Yes. yes. Okay. Very good. The next item on the business agenda is the DOC grant acceptance for the Civic Center parking lot. And Jeff, will you please share with us on that topic? Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, members of council, and members of the public. In June 2019, actually a little bit before that, the, uh, the City Council, uh, I believe, is some of their very first official duties put together a uh, legislative agenda for the first time for the city of Shelton. A uh, coordinated effort to ask our delegation to help us with various projects uh, in and around the city that uh, there was consensus in the community that the projects were necessary. 
One of those was the Civic Center parking lot, and that I do believe was part of the downtown visioning project that the community also collaborated on over a uh, longer period of time that felt that it was an important uh, asset and piece to help revitalize the downtown core. Uh, we uh, asked for several things, and we were lucky enough to uh, receive this grant from the Department of Commerce with the help of our delegation, which we are very thankful for and appreciative of. And we have a award uh, from the Department of Commerce before you tonight on the business agenda for uh, paving our Civic Center parking lot, along with a basketball uh, uh, court and uh, some pickleball courts. Uh, so we'll have a nice uh, area around town. The other part of that is uh, potentially an electric vehicle charging station. So, and I'll be sharing more information with you about that as it becomes, um, uh, as I have more information. That grant opportunity just opened up and uh, we're exploring all opportunities or all possibilities with the potential mm -hmm. for that gr those grant dollars. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have, and uh, we ask that you place this on the action agenda for March 17th. And again, is there any member of the public who wishes to speak to this but not previously signed up? All right, seeing none, council members, any comments or questions? No. Nope. Jeff, thank you, Steph. I know this has been a, a long, ongoing project to make sure that we're making good use of those funds, and um, we appreciate your hard work and the work of our delegation in getting those for us, and we look forward to seeing the next step. So um, is there concurrence to place this on the action agenda for March 17th? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And we have no action items to discuss, so we'll move on to our second general public comment period. And Donna? There we have no one else. All right. Uh, oh, Donna. Wait, just one moment. Yeah. I see a hand. Two. And I'll add you. Okay. We have Mike Olson. And then Marilyn Ward wants to speak also. Uh, Mike Olson, I am a city resident. Um, <coughs> I wanted to make a comment about your process of the new public works uh, director. I, I noticed on Facebook there was a photograph put of the uh, committee, I guess, that was chosen to interview him. And as a past commissioner and involved in city politics, I, I know that it's really hard to get the public involved and engaged in these processes. And I, I would recommend that you reach out to some regular folks. I mean, you had the Chamber of Commerce, you had the PUD, you had all the organizations, but there was no regular resident involved in any of the, the you know, the interview processes. And I think that, you know, little things like that, you know, you reach out with your, your public meetings and and your um, spotlight on Shelton and things like that. I, I think you need to involve more residents in, in, in some of these processes just to be able to engage and say that you've engaged, even though I know that it's difficult and you don't get a lot of response. But just as a comment uh, that I noticed that all these, I've been in, involved in many of them and uh, never has just a regular folks been involved in them. So just want to say that. Thank you, Mike. And Marilyn. Marilyn Ward, and I do live in, in Shelton, the city of Shelton. And um, this is going to be my um, sixth time, I think, standing up here saying the same thing. And I'm going to say it until I see it done, the signs on the freeway. I was told last time it was being done right then. I still don't see them. So maybe I can get an update <laughs> on that. Um, Jeff, would you be willing to give a brief update from LTAC on that, or would you prefer we handle that when Kevin's here as chair, what next time? I would, uh, I think that's appropriate for the LTAC uh, committee to discuss. So Marilyn, we'll ask that um, Kevin, Mayor Kevin Dorsey sits as the um, chair of the lodging tax committee and they're the ones funding that project. So we'll ask that he get in touch with you for an update okay. and appreciate you coming and speaking with us on that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anyone else who'd like to speak at public comment tonight? All right. In that case, we will move on to our administration report. Thank you very much again, Deputy Mayor, members of council, and members of the public. A few things I wanted to mention um, as part of our transparency initiative here at the city to make sure that people are involved and can find the information that they are interested in on our website uh, or otherwise. We, last year, uh, we, the council, authorized the adoption of uh, or the purchase of OpenGov, which is a transparency portal 
uh, for primarily financial information, but there's other information avail available as well, performance metrics. And I wanted to update you on the status of that program and kind of where we are and getting ready to utilize that specifically for the budget development for the 2021 budget, which will begin later this year. Uh, we had to spend a significant amount of time ensuring our chart of accounts is correct, which is incredibly important when you're inputting it into a new system. We uh, will sign off on that likely at the, uh, the teleconference tomorrow. Uh, it looks like everything has been cleaned up and uh, um, fixed, for lack of a better term, uh, over, over the last year. We have the 2018, 19, and 20 financial information loaded into the system. And uh, that cleanup work uh, has been completed so that when we tie out, all the numbers add up to zero, which is rather important. Um, we're working on the budget module at the moment and training for all the individuals and different departments responsible for budget development in the city will begin uh, the week of March 16th. So that's coming up very shortly. Uh, our payroll, uh, individuals responsible for payroll have worked with uh, OpenGov and the workforce module, which is a uh, workforce development and planning tool that we can use to project those costs out over multiple years uh, so that we have that information up front. And it's part of the budget module and it's moving ahead and our uh, IT department and the OpenGov project implementation manager are working closely together to make sure that we can present that information on our uh, newly updated and uh, revamped website that we'll be rolling out relatively shortly. We have a, a short window with our uh, IT vendor that uh, hosts our website where we can modify that and we're trying to hit that window uh, this year so we can have um, a more uh, user-friendly experience, a uh, better user interface with our website so that our citizens and others that are interested can find the information uh, quickly and easily uh, that they're looking for. That's that. If there's any questions about OpenGov, be happy to answer them. Uh, if not, I have a couple other items on my list. So any questions or concerns about uh, OpenGov and its implementation? Okay. Just a big kudos. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, one of the... I. I like ease of use on websites. So if I like it, I assume most people do. Uh, and we're trying to make that easier for everybody. Um, the other part, one of the other things I wanted to mention that I'm very, very happy with and uh, proud of the team that participated is um, our public works team and our planning team went through lean training. And lean training, for those of you uh, who aren't familiar with it, is a continuous improvement process that uh, you walk through and you put a whole bunch of sticky notes up on the board and then you can find out where you develop process improvement. A lot more complicated than that, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, we found many opportunities to improve our uh, commercial permitting processes. Um, found out that uh, sometimes departments uh, aren't speaking the same language, which tends to slow things down. And uh, we want to make that process and all our other permitting processes as efficient as we possibly can. Uh, lean is not a one-stop, uh, one-time event. It is an event that uh, it's continuous improvement. And as the name implies, you go back and look at these processes again and determine whether and where you can make more, that process more efficient. Um, it's, a, uh, it's basically steps until you, get, uh, until you make the process as efficiently as possible and then apply those principles to other processes within the city, specifically with permitting. So I'm very happy about that, and I'm going to ask uh, one or two of the team members that are uh, more comfortable public speaking uh, to come in and provide council with a short presentation on uh, what they found, the opportunities that they uh, unearthed uh, to make us um, work better uh, with our contracting community and make things happen more quickly uh, and with more predictability and more transparency. Uh, next, we had uh, the Census 2020, which Councilmember Smith uh, mentioned a little bit earlier. Incredibly important to us, and we will be having, uh, we will be um, utilizing all our social media platforms to uh, encourage people to participate in that process. Uh, we're also meeting with uh, representatives from the school district 
uh, to make sure that uh, we are uh, reaching out to all the people that we can possibly reach out to uh, to help ensure that Shelton gets, has its needs met through federal government and state government funding for, uh, for our purposes for the next decade. Very, uh, very important to us. And lastly, uh, coronavirus, I know several people have mentioned that. We have uh, shared information with all, with all of our employees today about uh, precautionary steps, recommended best practices from the Department of Health, and we are paying very close attention to updates on that and working close, closely with our partners at the county and the county public health department. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I just want to take a moment and say I know that lean training is something that we've talked about um, at our council um, strategic visioning and uh, making sure that staff has tools that they need to serve the public in the way that we expect um, and really do that job. And I want to applaud you because you could have taken on a very small project or a small piece of what we do at the city, but to take on permitting as your first um, lean process I think was ambitious and I, I applaud that, so thank you. Absolutely. Any questions or comments for Jeff? All right, with that, we are now adjourning to an executive session to discuss the performance of a public employee. There will be no action to follow. That executive session will last just 30 minutes, and we will return here at 7.01. We will now resume our regular council meeting. And does the council have any new items for discussion this evening? No. Nope. Nope. Not nope. at this time? All right, then our next meeting will be on Tuesday, March 17th, 2020 at 6 p.m. We are adjourned.